Hello, welcome to this video. I'm David Dominey Fowler and I'm here to talk to you about how to improve your live streams. You've probably just seen a title come up and go away. Uh, and it's that kind of thing that I'm going to be showing you in this video. I watched a video a while back by a mathematician and maths communicator, great YouTube channel. Uh, it's the channel's called Stand Up Maths, although I believe he put this on his second channel. And he was, uh, his name's Matt Parker and he was lampooning some of the late night uh, talk show hosts who are now working from home and sort of giving them some tips on how to improve their broadcasting capabilities from someone who you know does YouTube and has been working from home for many years and I thought it was such a good video but he makes a really great point which I'm not going to try and make again so I'm just going to let him do it in his own words. Over to Matt. If you go for terrible audio and terrible visuals, people are going to get distracted. They won't be able to relax and just follow what you're actually saying. If you're worse than most YouTube videos, and indeed worse than a lot of just video calls, it's going to stick out. It's going to distract people. But that is such a good point, because people do struggle to stay engaged when the content is not made with a certain degree of professionalism. Um, and that's something that I've been working on quite a bit uh, in the last few weeks because I've been trying to do some streams for the Aussie Floyd and I've been doing some streams for my own stuff, which some is on my YouTube channel. And with each video, I'm just trying to do little things to improve them. And I've now kind of come up with a bit of a system and I wanted to give you a tour around it. I'm not going to go through all the coding. This isn't a tutorial video on how to code or anything like that. Um, but everything I'm doing in this is easily findable in thousands of other YouTube videos. And you can also write to me if you need something or you're trying to do something specific that you don't know how to do and maybe I can help you. So um, let's dive into the code and dive into what I've been doing. Uh, at the beginning of the video you saw a blue screen come up which said improving your video streams with OBS, HTML5, CSS and JavaScript and it had my web address on it. Well this is actually the HTML page which was displayed. Um, HTML pages are basically what what goes on under the hood to display you a web page, whether it be on your phone or on your tablet or on your computer. And you also have a document called a CSS document, which gives the layout and you know font sizes and colors and other such things. And it's nice to keep them separate because you can have one document with layout and then several pages that use the same layout. Um, again, not gonna go too much into the code, but there's lots of tools out there um, that, that make these things for you in a nice, friendly way. I mean, I tend to code it by hand because I know how to do that. But there's, uh, there's some stuff that comes with the Adobe suite. There's um, plenty of free solutions online where you can sort of drag and drop and position things and change text color and get all of this code made for you. And you, Or you can just type it in Notepad. You don't need any, um, any fancy software to work with it. Although I do recommend using Visual Studio Code or Visual Studio. I'm using Visual Studio here, but um, Visual Studio Code is, is a great free bit of software that you can use to sort of do any of this stuff that I'm talking about. Um, I'm also using a free piece of software called OBS. Now OBS is uh, here, you'll get some video feedback with this um, because I'm actually using it now to record this video. Now this software is free and it allows you to set up scenes down the side. You can have cameras attached to it, you can capture your desktop, uh, but you can also add in web browsers as sources. So um, that's really useful because effectively you can write anything you want as a title and then include it as a web browser, which is exactly what I did. If I go back to the beginning here where it says HTML title, you'll see that there's a web browser which has this page here that says full screen title in that web page. So I'll click on it, my mic will go off, but you can see it again. And then when I move up to the next scene, I've got a uh, thing here that says fly in title, which is a browser window. And then I am click to the next scene again and I get my desktop back. Now, if I drag this over to my other monitor, um, we won't get that video feedback. But that fly in title, for example, was here. I've given it a class of bottom title and I've got a header one and a header two, which is what you saw fly in. And then in the CSS document here, 
I've got the position of where I want it on the screen. I've got um, a keyframes fly in here. So at 0% in, it's completely over to the right. The left is offset by 100%, so it's off the screen. And then at 10%, it moves over to 30 pixels in. And then at 90%, it's still at 30 pixels. But then at 100%, it goes back over and off the screen. And that's exactly the action that you see in the title. If I just turn on the uh, fly in again, you'll see that it comes in, hangs around for a bit, and then leaves. Here we go. There you go. And that's all defined here in this section here. So using CSS, um, you know, to add shadows to things, add nice looking text, um, and using HTML to display that within OBS is just a really, really simple way of making things look much more professional. Now, when I was doing some of the stuff for Aussie Floyd, um, we were doing this uh, stream show called Top 10 Tuesdays, which we are doing every week on a Tuesday, surprise, surprise, from the title. Um, and I wanted to have a little uh, title for it, so I made one in After Effects, Adobe After Effects, which, you know, simple, but just worked, a little circle that scrolls across and reveals the uh, title with a bit of motion blur on it. And then I started to think, well, could that be done in... CSS and HTML um, and I thought yeah of course it can so I knocked it up very simple page there so I had TTT container and within that I had a, uh, a, um, a div with the class of TTT text and I put the the text the top 10 Tuesday in as three headers and I wrapped the T in a span tag on each one and then I had the circle that moves as an overlay is just a div and the entire thing is defined as um, in a CSS document, as animation. So I've got the container, which has got a background color. So this here starts at 100% opacity. So the opacity is one on that. And then when it gets to the end, it fades out. This here will display the whole um, page and then just fade it out once it's finished. And then you've got the text here, which I've set various things on, but I've got the fade in there, which fades in. If I go down to here, fades in once it's got to 99%, it suddenly fades into 100%. And then I set how long I want that to last there, which is 2.85 seconds. And then down here, I have the circle, which is a four second animation. And of course, I've set the border radius of 50%, which basically turns a square into a circle. And that starts with a scale factor of three. And then when it gets 60% into the animation, it scales it back down to its normal size and sets it over to the right. And then at 100% of the animation, it changes it so the right is actually far off the screen I'm not going to go through all the code of it, but when you actually play that through, so I'll pull it up here as a title over the top, um, it looks really cool. And fundamentally, that is um, pretty similar to what I did in After Effects. But instead of rendering it out as a video, um, it's actually rendered out by a web page using HTML5 and CSS. Now, you can take this one step further. So you could actually embed videos within the HTML because HTML5 allows you to embed video and audio objects. So I started doing this thinking I could build up a playlist of songs. And I ended up writing a, it's kind of prototype bit of software at the moment, um, but it allows me to build up um, kind of structured programs with titles automatically appearing and stuff um, and I'm using this to do the Aussie Floyd top 10 Tuesday show and basically what I've got here is a program monitor which is in a web browser which I'm going to get rid of for the moment and I've got um, a list of all the um, <clears throat> all the different videos that I could uh, select to put in the playlist and I've got a little program sequence down here, which um, which at the moment is just coded in JavaScript. But then when I click play from start, that will actually, in whatever browser the monitor window is open, that will actually start playing the sequence from the first 
command onwards. And then I've written all the various different commands that it can call as um, as basically as, as JavaScript functions. So this one here will load and play the video and set at 30 seconds the title right over the top and then it will tell you what video is coming next or bring up the title of the stream. Um, and it's quite exciting to do this and the results are great. You know, when I when we did our first um, stream with it, it went really well. And I've got an example here because I recorded a bit of the stream. So this here is just video that I'd I'd rendered um out with the with the band name going over the top but this here this countdown in the corner here i need to move my uh, take my camera off so that you can actually see that one second there we go so this down here is actually um is actually generated by the javascript and that will count down till the video ends so um if i hit play on that you'll see it going And as you can see, when it gets to here, the uh, the countdown timer changes now to that. This is all still rendered as part of the video, but this is all being put into an HTML5 video object, uh, which is playing. And then when the video ends, it goes to the server and gets the next command in the sequence. So we're now playing the TTT intro. That was rendered, but I could do that in HTML5, as I showed you. And now it's going to play the first song, whatever the the number 10 position for that week is. And then the titles will go in for the song. And then once they go, you will get in the bottom left-hand corner the chart position. And at the top, you will get You Are Watching Ozzy Floyd's Top 10 Tuesday. And all of that is being generated by this program here, where it creates the layer, it loads and plays the video, it creates the countdown timer. It then adds the little logo loop that comes up at the top that flies around. In fact, let me show you that just so you, in case you missed it. So at the top there, there's the, uh, the little prism that is going round and round and round. So that command there adds the logo loop and then it loads, uh, loads the TTT intro. So this command here gets the um, feed from the server for the chart positions. And then at this point, I actually make it jump to here and load the video, whatever the number 10 position is, for example. And there's some commands in there, which once it finishes, it then goes back to here. It takes one off the value. So then it goes and loads, plays the ident again, and then it loads number nine position and then goes back to there, takes one off, loads the number eight position. And then basically once it gets down to number one and it's, there's no number zero position, it then moves on to the end, fades out the black bar at the bottom and uh, plays the end video, which is called end.mp4. So this here is a little sequence which allows me to put together a program for streaming using OBS and the whole thing is purely just a web browser window in OBS and it works surprisingly well it looks really really professional to my eyes anyway and um, and it's engaging and and the first stream we did with the Aussie Floyd you know had 70,000 viewers live viewers over the over the broadcast and I just thought I'd share with you what I'm doing here because um, I'm seeing lots of my friends going live doing broadcasts from home and it's okay for the first one or two because it's a novelty but after a while you just want the production quality to be a little bit better so if you ask me to I will go into some of this in a lot more detail I can go through the code and I can also custom write some stuff for you so if you want anything to improve your live stream in the way that I've been doing with the live stream I've been doing then please do get in touch I'm here to help um, and thanks for watching this video